All right, in this video, we're going to look at projectile motion, uh, in particular, instantaneous velocity. So this says, if a ball is thrown into the air with a velocity of 40 feet per second, its height in feet after t seconds is given by this equation. Find the velocity when t equals 2. Okay, well, we know the height is given by y. We're gonna, I'm going to write it in function notation. So y of t we know is 40t minus 16t squared. So its velocity would be the derivative of that. So v of t would be y prime of t, which is 40 minus 32t. And y prime of 2, therefore, would be 40 minus 32 times 2, which is 40 minus 64 or negative 24. And the units would be feet per second. Okay, so computing an instantaneous velocity is pretty straightforward if you know the power rule. Let's look at a few other examples here involving projectile motion. So this says if a rock is thrown upward on the planet Mars with a velocity of 10 meters per second, its height in meters after t seconds is given by this equation here. Okay, it says find the velocity of the rock after one second. So again, let's use function notation. If h, h of t is the height, then we are looking for h prime of t to get the velocity. So v of t would be h prime of t, which would be 10 minus and then 2 times 1.86 is, uh, what is that, 3.72 t. So therefore, uh, v of 2, uh, v of v of 1, that's what we wanted. After 1 second, v of 1 would be 10 minus 3.72 times 1, which is 10 minus 3.72, which is 6.28. And the units there would be meters per second. Find the velocity of the the rock when t equals a. Well, actually, we've already found the velocity in terms of time, so v of a would just be 10 minus 3.72 a. When will the rock hit the surface? So the rock's going to hit the surface when the height is 0, so we want to set the height equal to 0. So um, h of t, so I'm just going to note that, when h of t equals 0, so that implies that we want 10t minus 1.86t squared to equal 0. We can factor out a t. So we get t times 10 minus 1.86t equals 0. So that tells us at time 0, um, the rock will be at the surface. But that's just when it was launched. So um, if we move over here, that tells us that t equals 0 or also 10 minus 1.86t equals 0. And then solving this for t, I believe, gives us about 5.376. And what is this seconds? OK. So I'm ignoring the time equals 0, because that's clearly not when it hits the surface. That's when it's uh, originally thrown upward. With what velocity will the rock hit the surface? So now we just need to evaluate our velocity function at the time when it hits the surface. And so we get 10 minus 3.72 times 5.376. And when you compute that, I believe you get 10. And actually, actually, you get negative 10. OK, negative 10. And our units there, of course, are meters per second. So there's something to point out here, even though there, there wasn't a lot of hard computations to do. But notice the negative 10 is precisely the opposite of the velocity when the rock was launched. That makes sense. And the reason it does is just if we graph the, the height function Right, so the height function is just a parabola, um, 
and we actually refactored over here, so it's t times 10 minus 1.86t. We know that it's a parabola that opens downward that essentially looks like this, right? So this is our height. We found this time to be 5.376, this is t. So if it was launched initially at 10 meters per second, that's telling you the slope right at that moment, right? The slope here is 10 meters per second. By symmetry of the situation, a ball is going to go up, it's going to stop, right? It's going to stop in midair. This is when the ball is at, uh, essentially we can say the ball changes direction. Actually, it's a rock. Let's get it right. So the rock, the rock changes direction. But if, by symmetry of the situation at this moment, the slope is completely the opposite of what it was when it was launched. So the symmetry in this situation makes uh, can kind of help us make sense of this. Um, obviously, that's only you got to be careful. It's only with a parabola that starts at the origin, or in other words, you launch something from the ground. But in any case, there is a little uh, kind of overview of projectile motion.